These hives in Wiltshire are an unlikely location for an experiment that could help save one of Britain's most threatened insects, the honeybee. Ron Hoskins has been keeping bees since he was 12. Now, the bees he tends are the subject of groundbreaking research that could provide clues to the origin and cure for a disease that has wiped out bee colonies throughout the UK. The culprit is this tiny mite, Varroa. This pest and the diseases linked with it have played a part in the deaths of about 30% annually of all of the bees in Britain. The mites really are very tiny indeed. If you look on this board here, some of the little red dots are Varroa mite. They're tiny, but they're deadly. The mite gets into the hive and then feeds on tiny bee larvae, sucking the blood out of them. That weakens them and leaves them susceptible to a range of viruses that the mites carry. The reason Ron's hives are exciting interest is that his bees, although they had Varroa and initially big colony deaths, haven't had anything like the death rates of other hives. Ron has never used pesticides to kill the mites. He believes that his bees have learned how to groom the larvae to get rid of them. I first met him in 2011 for Spring Watch. He'd spotted the evidence on the debris trays. I had noticed that there are little varroa mites on there yeah. and I collected them and examined them and found a lot of them were damaged. Damaged? I'm pretty sure it was done by the bees actually grooming them off. So they're mutually grooming these things off? Monkey fashion, certainly. Wow. Not only that, these German pictures show bees in the hive actually unplugging the larval cells and dragging larvae infested with mites out. Now armed with years of data, Ron has gone further, breeding queens from hives that show the best grooming behaviour in an attempt to fix that behaviour in the next generation. He thinks he's bred bees that can resist Varroa. Oh, my goodness, look at that. That works, doesn't it? And, and what about these hooks either side here? Right, those are micro-manipulators. They allow me to open the queen uh, gently, carefully, not to damage her, and open the vaginal orifice ready for insemination of semen. And of course, what it guarantees is that you can get your grooming gene, which you've collected from the male in the semen, into this, into this receptive queen. That's right. The theory is that we are going to put as many drones as we can until we've got, uh, as it were, Swindon being a gene pool of, of hygienic bees. Swindon saves the world of bees. Three years on, and Ron is still impregnating and his hives are thriving. So you might think, well, that's that, game over. Plucky amateur saves the British bee industry. But there's a sting in this tale. This is Plymouth scientist Declan Schroeder, an expert in the viruses that affect C. plankton, a range of viruses which are very similar in their genetic makeup to those associated with Varroa. Declan is a world authority on bee colony collapse. He's shown a connection between the presence of viruses in a hive and the deaths of bee colonies. But Ron's thriving bees were a big scientific puzzle. Well, they shouldn't be surviving. These viruses, when they get into, into, into any hive, and they dominate, especially when Varroa is present, you have no control. Of all the literature and the work we've done recently have suggested that these hives should be, should be dead. They should not be alive. So, every week, Ron collects bees from his hives and sends them to Declan to have the viruses in them analysed. Back at the lab, they're frozen with liquid nitrogen, crushed up, and then the resulting liquid is analysed in a sequencer for its DNA makeup. The team are looking for two types of virus. The first, called type A, is carried by the mite and is linked with deformed wing syndrome. It hampers the bee's flight and it's also strongly associated with colony collapse. They're also tracking a second suite of viruses, type B. 
named after the mite itself, the Varroa destructor. We looked at Ron's hives to see whether we had virus loads, and certainly we found high levels of virus. Now we only have two options, it's either going to be a type A or type B. E. Type A, very dangerous, causes colony collapse, overwintering death. Type B, not that dangerous at all, no disease symptoms associated with it. When the results came through, the DNA analysis showed a large amount of viruses, but what Declan saw about Ron's bees astonished him. So when we got the results back, we were absolutely amazed. And this is the plot we saw. We saw two areas, one being type A and the other one being type B. And you can clearly see type B being the only virus present in Ron's bees. Wow, what, a, what an astounding result. But that also made me think, this could be the answer to why Ron's bees are not dying. As a virologist, Declan quickly realised that what was happening was something similar to vaccination. Thousands queue for vaccination as a small outbreak of smallpox... Mass vaccination was the immediate response to smallpox outbreaks in the 1950s, and something like the vaccination process in humans was happening with Ron's bees. With smallpox vaccine, an inert virus prevents the active virus from getting a hold. But insects don't work in quite the same way as humans do. So there's a phenomenon called superinfection exclusion. It's akin to vaccination. And what it essentially means is that you have a level of infection that's quite a high level, and it prevents any dangerous virus from coming in and causing disease. So there's a harmony that gets developed. So in this case, the honeybees carrying this high level of infection of a non-lethal form of, of virus and is simply excluding any other virus from entering. And more particularly in this case, the dangerous form of type A. And it's here that some of Ron's hygiene theory and practices might well have been critical. You see, for years, Ron hasn't used chemicals on his hives. He's been relying on the bees' grooming behaviour to deal with the problem. Crucially, he hasn't killed off the mites. By not constantly killing them off, it could be that Ron's bees and the mites have adapted to each other and the suite of viruses that those varroa mites have. Other keepers, who are constantly killing the mites with chemicals, are therefore inviting an opportunity for new mites to come in with different variants of those viruses. So perhaps, inadvertently, by not using chemicals, Ron might have just opened up a way of protecting this insect so important in pollination and the general health of our planet. But what will Ron make of Declan's theory? So, Ron, you, you know that we've looked at your hives, right? And the idea was trying to find what sort of viruses you have in your hive. What you have is type B. This means that your hives have been protected by this virus. It's classic virology, what we know is known as superinfection exclusion. So, as the term says, the infection which is in your hives is excluding this really nasty virus, the type A, from getting in. What we suspect is happening is that the varroa is keeping your hives immunised, in a sense. Right. Good. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing, yeah. Lovely. Fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Declan's new theory doesn't mean that Ron's bee-grooming ideas are wrong. It may well be that they're an important part of how the bees deal with the disease by keeping the viruses in the hive in some sort of check. Ron's very happy that decades of hard work counting endless mites seem to have led to some sort of breakthrough. What do you think then, Ron, about Declan's research? It's pretty exciting stuff. It's marvellous, um, very, very good. It's probably what we anticipated was happening, but didn't uh, to have the proof is great. It started in 95 when I found that first colony that appeared to be immune, and it's progressed since then. 19 years, no chemicals, the bees have done it for themselves. 
Ron's going to continue with his breeding program, and Declan wants to take his research further to find out the best use that can be made of these resistant bees. So maybe it's good news for once, and there will still be honey for tea. <laughs>